In this video, I'd like to continue talking about the Sierpinski triangle, which remember that this is formed by starting with some equilateral triangle and then taking each of the side lengths and finding the midpoint. And once the midpoints are found, we connect them all with lines and notice that we would then have four equilateral triangles that are within the original equilateral triangle. And from there, we will remove the middle equilateral triangle. And that process is carried out infinitely many times. You can see that we would take each of these remaining three ones, find the midpoints of each of the side lengths, and then connect them with lines. And again, you'd be left with four equilateral triangles where the middle one is then removed. And we would do that for each of these three, and then for every equilateral triangle, always find the midpoints of the sides, connect the lines, and remove that middle triangle. That process will be carried out infinitely many times, and this picture here is the Sierpinski triangle after that process has been carried out to infinity. And in the last video, we mentioned that the dimension of this triangle is approximately 1.585, where remember that the dimension of a line, this is one dimensional, the dimension of a square is two dimensional, and a cube would be three dimensional. So this triangle is somewhere in the middle of a line and a square when talking about its dimension. But I'd like to focus on how to actually calculate that dimension. And to do that, we need to use an equation that we derived in a previous video called fractal dimension. And if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend watching that first. But let's make a little bit of room. The equation relates what we call the scaling factor, which is essentially how much we are going to divide each of the side lengths. And we call this 1 over r then once we divide each of the side lengths, and I should mention this is for self-similar objects, usually fractals, once we divide the side lengths, we will be left with a greater number of pieces. And we say that the number of pieces after dividing the shape is called n, and then we can call the dimension of the object d. And the equation we found relating these ideas is that when we take r and raise it to the d power, we get the number of pieces n. For instance, if we had a square and we decide to split each of the sides into four equal pieces, where now each of these pieces is one fourth of the original size, and when we split this square up, you'll notice that we end up with many smaller squares. In fact, we will end up with 16 of these. But if we use our equation, we can see that the equation makes sense. We take our scaling factor, which is 1 over 4, to find the r value. And in this case, r would be 4. And we know this is a square, so its dimension is 2. D is 2, and the number of pieces we end up with, n, is 16. And you can see that when we plug in the values to this equation, 4 to that dimension, 2, is equal to 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So the equation makes sense for simpler shapes, and we can apply this equation here to fractals. We just need to determine the scaling factor and how many pieces result once we divide the shape up. And since we're dealing with an equilateral triangle and we are finding the midpoints of each of these sides and then connecting them with a line and removing that middle equilateral triangle, we can notice that each of these new side lengths is half of what the original side length is, meaning that our scaling factor is one half. And we're also removing this middle piece here. 
which means that we transformed our original piece into three smaller pieces that are similar to the original shape. So we can say that our scaling factor, in this case, is one half. These equilateral triangles will have bases that are half the original size of the starting equilateral triangle. And that will be true as we go step by step. The number of pieces generated after carrying out one of these divisions, we would have three pieces. Since notice that we started with this big equilateral triangle and we ended up with three smaller ones on the inside. And with this information, we can figure out what the dimension would be. Since notice that R is two here, when we match up the scaling factor one over R to one half, and we know N is three, we can just plug these into this equation and find that r to the d or 2 to the d power, our dimension, is equal to n, which is 3. And this equation, this exponential equation, is asking us what power we have to raise 2 to to get 3. And we can rewrite this as a logarithm and then evaluate that on a calculator. Since remember that if we have a to the b is equal to c, we can rewrite this exponential equation as a logarithm where the base of the logarithm is the same as the exponential equation. We'd have log base a and logarithms are equal to exponents. So the logarithm would be equal to b and c would be the input of the logarithm. Whatever the exponential equation is equal to is the input of the logarithm. And from here, we can rewrite our exponential equation. It would have the same base of two, so log base two. Three would go as the input of the logarithm since it's what the exponential equation is equal to. And logarithms are always equal to the exponent since logarithms are exponents. Meaning that our dimension is simply log base two of three. And to put this into a calculator, we would have to use the change base rule. So we can either change this to a common log, which has base 10, or a natural log, which has base E. And I'll write both just so that we can see it. We can use log base 10 of three divided by log base 10 of two. Let me make just a bit more room. And remember with logarithms that we usually omit the base when it is the common log, when it's base 10. So we can just write this as log three over log two, and we can just plug this into our calculator. Or we can use base E, which if we're using base E, that's the base of the natural log. So we could also write this as the natural log or ln of three divided by ln of two. And when we plug this into a calculator, we will get an irrational number namely the value 1.5849 and this is an irrational number meaning that this decimal will go on forever without some type of pattern. So this is the dimension of this Sierpinski triangle.